Welcome to the seventh in the NASA 32 series. In this video we're going to be setting up some addressable LEDs to the board. A couple of things before we get into the detail that we need to talk about about the LED strips. The LED strip code is changing very quickly so um, I've had to install version 1.7.1 of the firmware and it looks like there's already another version in the works. A big changes in 1.7.1 about how the LED pieces worked so I had to change everything for it to work here. Um, you need an LED strip that has individually addressable LEDs that the NASI32 knows how to talk to. So if you search for WS2812 LED strip on the usual places, Amazon, eBay, Banggood, you'll find this kind of stuff that works. It is available in multiple lengths. I've just got a small hard physical board here to show you in the demo, but you can buy longer flexible strips and you can address up to 32 of the LEDs. So if you wanted, you could actually have a number of the LEDs out at the end of each of the arms and maybe a couple of strips in the middle pointing down to show you key things like the status of arming. There are a number of things that you can set up each of the LEDs to do. You can change the individual colors. You can have those colors changing. You can have them showing whether or not the board is armed, the mode it's in, whether or not there is a fail safe condition, whether there's a low battery, what flight mode you're in, etc. And we'll cover that in this video. To connect it to the board is very straightforward. There are only three wires on a WS2812 LED strip. There's plus five volts and ground, which again, as usual, we're going to pull off the five volts and the ground connection off the board's spare motor outs. And we also have another line, which is connected to pin five on the RC inputs. Again, as with the minimum OSD, as with things like the GPS, as with things like the sonar, you need to make sure that you have PPM enabled, i.e. you have all of your signals from your receiver coming in over one three pin cable. If you don't have that, pin five will not be available for you to use with an LED. Everything that we're covering here is covered in great detail at the address that's at the bottom of each of the slides. If you want to know more about how all this stuff works and spend a good 20 minutes figuring it out, reading it through, ledstrip.md is a fantastic document and is evolving and changing all the time as the code does. To connect multiple strips together, so say for example we wanted to have four or five LEDs at the tip of each of the arms of our multi-rotor, then you can do that. You would just cut up your flexible strip into the lengths that you needed, and at each end you'll notice that there's a digital in and a digital out, D in, D out. You always want the signals coming into the little strip in D in, and then if you want to connect other pieces around the craft, you're going to daisy chain them, connect them in series. So the digital out of the first set of LEDs will go to the digital in of the next set and so on to a maximum of 32 LEDs. The way that each of the LEDs is set up and controlled by the NASI32 relies on four sets of information and it's important that we cover this very quickly because although the graphical user interface is getting better all the time in clean flight it isn't yet super intuitive. We'll go through it in the video, but I found that actually going into the command line interface and using the LED commands in there to look at how the LEDs are configured has really helped me figure out when I'm doing something a bit daft. So let me just quickly run through this. And again, if you want to know detail, have a look at the ledstrip.md document. So in these four sets of numbers, the first one is the grid coordinates. The grid is the fifth actually 16 by 16 square because the first square is zero. That is um, a way to physically tell the NASA 32 where the LED you're talking about is located and that is useful for things like the indicators and some of the other modes because depending on where the LED is on the craft depends on how that mode behaves. So think of it like the indicators on a car, the, um, you know, the way it's wired up is so that if you turn right all of the indicator LEDs down the right hand side of the car are the ones that flash. It's the same here but you need to tell the NASI32 software that the indicator LEDs that you want to flash down the right hand side are down the right hand side and that's how we do it through the coordinates. Next three numbers are the direction so you have north, east, west, south, up and down. Um, it's kind of uh, 
reiterating really what the grid coordinates are showing you. So you have north, east, west, south for the you know up, down, left and right. And also you have up and down here to show whether or not the LEDs are pointing upwards or down. And if up and down isn't selected, then the NASI 32 assumes it's pointing out to the side. Then you have MMM. These are the modes. Each LED strip can have multiple modes on it if you'd like. Warning is for things like fail safe and battery warnings. Flight mode and orientation. Uh, the flight mode you're in will change the color of the LEDs that you're looking at. Um, indicator is just like we've discussed. It's like the indicator on a car. Arm state will go from green to blue depending on whether the board is armed or not. Thrust state changes color from one to another depending on how much throttle and thrust is being used. Ring thrust state is for those LED rings that you sometimes see being sold that are popped inside the um, outlet of a ducted fan on a plane and they, they give like an afterburner effect, a glow. Um, that's what ring thrust state is for specifically. And the last one is color. And you can set the color using one of um, 16 numbers. So that's what those last two bits are. So let's look at the colors that are there by default. There are actually 16, zero to 15. So if you wanted to set an LED up to be red, you'd say that you wanted color three. If you wanted it to be orange, it will be color four. If you wanted it to be yellow, it will be color five and so on. These are the default colors that are set up in the NASA 32 firmware. You can change these colors using the CLI command. So if you're not a big fan of deep pink and you don't use it a lot on your craft, but you want another color that you're really interested in, then you can actually set that up and change what 13 actually is. We're not going to cover that in this video, but we're going to use the standard defaults in the setup. So now we've got that covered, let's jump into the bench. We'll actually install the board and show you how it's actually plugged in. Then we'll connect the craft to clean flight and actually set up the LEDs. So here's the board installed on the craft. You can see um, it is just a series of LEDs. This one has eight LEDs on it and it's quite rigid. Um, the way we have it installed, if we just go through on the back, you should see quite clearly, it says uh, the two outside connections are ground and then we have a four to seven volts in and a D in and on the opposite side it says D out. So ground goes to the negative pin on one of the ESC connections. The four to seven volt connection goes all the way through to the plus five volts on the motors out and the last one which is digital in which is this um, orange cable is going into pin 5 which is underneath where the 3 pin PPM connector comes into the craft. Now with that connected that's all we have to do we are ready if obviously we had multiple of these boards on each of the arms then we'd data chain off the other end but for this demo we're not going to do that so I'll connect this to clean flight to power it up and while we're looking at this LED strip on top of the board, we'll actually configure it through the software. Okay, so here we are, we have the mode selected. This is how we have the lights currently configured. We have red on the outside, green on the inside. The middles are status lights, and the one in between the green and red are actually indicators. So as I move my aileron left and right, it kind of flashes to show which way the craft is turning. Now let me show you what that looks like in clean flight. If we connect, then the first thing you would have to do once you have the LEDs installed, of course, is go into configuration, jump down towards the bottom, and in there you have the LED strip. You're gonna to have to click that and say save and reboot. Once you have that, then you'll have the LED strips with some lights on, and you can start to change things. If we go into LED strip now, you can see that that's how we have the strip configured. So the outside color we have set to two, which is that lovely red. Then we have the next one along is set to be an indicator. Then the next one along is set to be an arm state. So at the moment it's green, but if I arm the board, they'll go blue and I disarm, they go back to green. So that's how that one works. And then the third one along is actually the throttle setting. And then I've duplicated that along the other side. Now, the reason that these are listed in the top 
here is because that's where they're going to be on the craft. So this 16 by 16 grid is a kind of representation of where they are going to be looking overhead on the craft. So because mine are all going to be at the front, that's where they are. Now let me clear all of these. So we'll clear them all and we'll also clear all of the wiring and we'll save. And then if I go into something like CLI and come back to LED strip, so the board reboots, you'll see that all of the LEDs go to their default white position. Now, to program it, the first thing we need to do is to tell NASA32 where these LEDs are going to be. And the LED numbers go sequentially, with LED0 being the first one in whatever strip that you have. So my LED0 is on the left-hand side, going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if I was going to have um, them around the craft, then I could put some over here, which would be on the front right-hand arm, some over here on the front left-hand arm, and all the way around. Now, because I have a strip, it's relatively straightforward. First thing we need to do is click wire ordering mode, and then go up to the top, and now, if the board goes green, and we click and tell the board where each of these are. Now, if my first three LEDs, if I'd broken them up, were gonna be in the right-hand side, I click over here. But this for me is very straightforward. All that I do is tell it where I want them. So I'm going to actually, my first click will be LED zero. So I'm gonna put them on this strip here, which is towards the front of the craft, which is where mine will be mounted. So zero, and as I'm clicking, it's just sequentially adding the LEDs up. So there's my seven LEDs. So I'm going to then come out of wire ordering mode and now I've got these seven boxes that can, I can actually configure. So as we did before, the LED zero, which is the one on the very left, I'm going to make that a color and we'll make that color, let's make it color seven this time. I'll do the same with the other end. So it is symmetrical, color seven. Uh, we will have the middle two as, this time we'll have those two as the arm state. We'll have the indicators on one and six, and that means it'll flash. And then we'll have these two guys as, oh, I don't know, something like modes and orientation. And again, you can have multiple modes set, so you can also have that set for throttle as well, and you can see it appears as both. Now, you can also down here set whether or not it's north, east, west, or south. You can actually select all of the um, LEDs at once and say they're all north LEDs um, and they're not up or down. So it's quite a quick easy way to set everything. Now I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go save and there we go. We now have the LEDs as I have set. And again to prove the LED the indicators are working, aileron left and aileron right. If I arm the board, the middle two go blue. If I disarm, the middle two go green. To check what you've actually got everything set as, you can jump into the CLI and in here type LED and press return. And if we scroll up to the top, there's the first eight um, LEDs, zero to seven, that we've configured. You can see what they're doing. So this is showing you the numbers that we looked at in the slides. So that's a very quick whistle stop tour of how you configure the LEDs. Hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are looking at doing this. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and as always, happy flying.